You are from now on a commie, and you are a fucking commie. Don't like that. Give me a notice and fuck off. Gordon Ramsay, what a legend. Keyword. <laughs> I'm refusing to do the intro today. We're going to get there. No one liked it anyway. Yeah. Uh, this is no crying in the cool room. That's your intro. <laughs> Tommy, Tommy, now fuck off. Yeah, now fuck off, buddy. Yeah. We're in the studio. I love this studio. It's good. Hello. It's got some uh, got some tricky parts to it, but it's a great studio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Sorry>. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, we were just talking trash about eating for free and people not getting it. I've always eaten for free. Yeah. Um, like, I'm annoyed to pay for things. It's a pretty common um, thing that people will, like, accuse you of. Mm. And I put them in air quotes because, mm. like, it, what the fuck? Like, no one goes around. I, th I think there is definitely, like, some um, full, like, social media vlogs that will just walk around and... Or try and get free shit or try and... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but it's not special for us. No. You know? No, Always. so my, like, God, we were just chatting before that um, someone someone said... Uh, uh, was having a go at me for eating for free and actually on something that I paid for, which is normally the case. Like, people... It's hilarious. They just go off on a rant about something you paid for. You're like, wicked. Yeah. Um, but, I've, yeah, it's like, I've eaten for free my entire life. Yeah, I get annoyed about... Yeah having to buy shit yeah. and when you buy shit you yeah, but it's not it's not like you deserve it free <laughs> shit it's just like it's so normalized yeah yeah but you don't even get the good shit when you buy stuff do you know what i mean like so you're eating fries like i buy fries now but i want fries in a steel bowl with extra salt and some jus from the fucking pot you mm. can't buy that yeah that's what i want though yeah but like you're getting that for free like when you grew up you you ate for free yeah. Then starting a chef's apprenticeship, you ate for free. Like, I was a musician for a bit as well. They give you more free shit than you can Oh, the throw green in. room? Yeah, dude. Oh, my God. Like, can you eat more shit? Yeah. And then yeah. you just say you have a, have a, oh, I have an intolerance for bad food, and they just bring you, like, a duck leg or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so true. We went Chefing, backstage the everything's other day. for free. Chefing, everything's for free. Yeah. So it's not like a... I saw it's this. a weird thing to like accuse someone of eating for free. It's fucking insane. Yeah, well, no, to I'm, me anyway. As soon as I heard that, I was like, "Yeah, I get pissed off having to buy stuff." So we saw. Yeah, but it's not a pissed off thing. You're not. You're su no. You're suggesting it's like, or you kind of a little bit coming across like, you always want the good shit, which mm. is of course, but that's the stuff you get for free. Yes. Yeah. You'll it, never get it. No. Nah. You'll never get the edges of the Dauphinois. No, exactly. It's never going to happen. You're going to get the second cook on that Dauph. Yeah, you're going to get the like the middle bit because it's all squared up. You're not going to get the good bits on the side that you're going to like yeah. sizzle for a bit longer and caramelise and put a, all that extra jus on. Yeah. Or you're like, not going to hold back on your little steel bowl of jus. Because like, we used to do this thing where you'd make the this crab pasta with truffle mm -hmm. and you would send it and then the pan would still have like the best bit of the sauce yeah and you put a piece of bread in it and then you just grate yep. truffle over it yeah you're never going to get that it was all those, those carvings too like if you carve a steak carve a chicken breast carve it anything um, it's that outside first bit yeah that I always just go carve honk yes and then you've got a nice little f display yeah but you've eaten the, the perfectly caramelised bit obviously it's all fine everyone loves it yeah, yeah. But you got that gnarly bit. You got the good looking bit. Gnarly bit that won't sit on the plate. Prop you got to, you got to top it off to yeah. sit on the plate initially. Yeah. But you can just combine so many good things as well. Like on your section you've got three, you've got like confit duck leg. Yeah. Bread's always the go. <laughs> yeah. You might have some confit garlic from another section. You know, yeah. you've got a few things and you make these insane little like the best nibbles. meals ever. You're never gonna get that. No. You can't buy it. No. It's only for me. Yeah. But now I'm in the real world. I don't get any of that shit. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying now. Sorry. I was just catching up. You're still there. Yeah, yeah, because I'm still, still living it. Side. Yeah. I don't get any I don't get any cool shit anymore. I don't yeah. buy stuff. And I know. I know it's not the real good shit. There's so many stories I can tell you about that too. Like I, I used to get when I sort of about even 18 months ago, and I wasn't really doing that well online, but on social media, but... I didn't really care at the same time. And that was a very rude awakening when people started to recognise me and I would go to pay and they'd be like, nah. And I'm like, all right, but I've got cash. I'll just put the cash in the 
in the tip jar. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I know that's never going to go to the chefs, but at least I feel there's 20 bucks. I've done something. I've had two people walk that back out to me. Really? Yeah. And you're you like, don't want your tip? This is insanity. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, I saw but that. But it's, it's like owners. It's not like the, the barista will fucking walk it back out to you. So yeah, yeah. It's like the owner. Like, oh. Yeah. I saw that when we were at Royale's. They were so polite and nice and they wouldn't accept any payments and they helped us so much with... Yeah, or they put it on a tab anyway. Food yeah. and Ken and the boys, like, that was sick. I'm yeah. like, oh, this is his everyday life. It's not my everyday life. I actually, like, resist it because it is so, like, fucking boring. Mm-hmm. Um, merch as well. I try to buy my own merch and then some they people just... Give you the hot pepper hat. I, I fully bought this too. Jibbers. Yeah. Tasty hot sauce. I had it. Yeah. I had one. Which one did you have? Uh, hot red shit. The hot red shit. That's a good one, <laughs> eh? It was hot and red. I did not get the one I got. I think I gave the black garlic one, right? Uh, I hope so. Oh, speaking of black garlic, have you ever had. Um, I'm looking at my phone for a reason. The. Um, you know, chef ads. You know, like employment ads for chefs? Mm -hmm. They're always like, um, come work here. It's fast paced. It's fucking, Mm -hmm. it's insanely intense. You'll never go home and we do the best produce and it's really hard to cook. And if if you're up for the challenge, you're like, no. (laughs) Like that just reads like long hours, hard work. Yeah. Um, No one respects you. Like (laughs) like produce from way more different places than you need. Yeah. Like all of it makes great food, but that's how the ad reads. It's like, we're trying to get you excited about working the 80 hours. Yeah, and so they're they're, like, they've got to overcompensate. Yeah, and then they'll say, like, um, um, salary for the right um, fucking ding of work. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, it just, it's bringing up so much trauma. And when I see, but anyway, someone sent us this bloke called, bloke called uh, Matt sent us this the other day. All right, hit it. Well, sorry, this was 4 a.m. this morning, so <laughs> good morning, Matt. Um he, he's, he's still working at one of those those exciting he's, jobs. He's one of these blokes that DMs has anything to do with embarrassing Marco Pia White shit. Ah. Oh. Um, he just said, I just saw this advert I was looking at. And I don't know how to pronounce his place. Otolingo, which is, I don't know, it's a place. He's an internationally known family of restaurants and shops. We're looking for an experienced head chef for our central production kitchen to elevate our already established, organised, spelt wrong, and hardworking kitchen team. Spell check. <laughs> this role is an exciting one. is suitable for someone with experience in high volume cooking. Boo, in production <laughs> kitchens. Boo, or is <laughs> or who is looking to move on, move from a busy restaurant environment to a kitchen without the pressure of service, which is what. Re- exactly the opposite of what they just said, but wants to work in an exciting company that produces food and products to be proud of. Holy shit. Our recipes... Oh, my God. I've ne- by the way, I've, I've never read this, but fuck. <laughs> this, keep going. This actually made me sweat. <laughs> <clears throat> Our recipes are bright, fresh, seasonal, full of flavours and complex. Our flavours are multi-layered combinations Whoa. of herbs, spices, and umami-filled game changes such as black garlic and pomegranate molasses. Wow. <sighs> apply- is that the end? Shall I apply? <laughs> apply. Do you know what that is? What? A fucking that, HR department that has mean, never been in the kitchen. They didn't mention free food. Holy shit. Yeah, but that's what, that's what I was about to get at is, like, they're not written by the head chef. They're like, we need a bloke. Yeah. And they, or need a need a whatever. We need a pastry chef. We need a, and they just go. Are you excited about rolling fucking yeah yeah they're croissants trying to inspire, all day? But I wonder what kind of person they're going to get. You they're know what they need? They need to say it's got aircon that works. Look, don't fuck around. It's got aircon, or even go. It's got aircon half works at this area of the kitchen, and you're like, okay. They're like a cool room that hasn't broken down in the last year. Yeah, Some, like all those sorts of things. Do you know what they need the line that was bought. The gas line was fitted, you know, six months ago. In the last two years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit like that. That's so hilarious. And then they say the right – then you get like 400 applications. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know the only thing you need? This is a great game. And also the ability, the actual ability. They always say you have the ability to create your own menu. That's pretty much like the stock standard. Create your own menu. And you're like, well, that's everywhere, but – yeah. But then you get there and you're like, oh, no, it has to go through five other people and the social media management crew. And you're like, well, uh, well, no, no, no. What? What? 
The it, only, specific, it specifically says here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that I want to know about is like the floor is easy to squeegee. Yep. Yep. The drains run downwards. Yep. They're not on a hill. Yep. There's yep. no corner where everything pulls. Or be honest and say they all work except the one corner, but we're dealing with it or yeah. we know a trick. All you have to do is put towels down we know a there trick. and yep. you don't have to do buckets. I, all I need is like there is a hose to squirt yep. everything with. That's my favourite Or thing. if you're hiring like a, like a grill chef or a hot chef, you say the hot sh- side is cool. Pan section is a bitch because you get hit by the cool room door or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Just be honest Real about specific. it. Yeah, and say like, we're not hiring for that shit one. Yeah. We're hiring for this one and you will have a certain amount of whatever. Yeah, like just a reliable <laughs> The door doesn't knee open fridge. into you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. I just need a reliable knee fridge. All your prep is going to fit in your section. Oh, I was just about to say that. It's like we have <laughs> the right containers for the, <laughs> for the size of our fridges. We oh. have more containers than we need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is what we need. List, Utensils list are like, plenty. Yeah, the combi oven is a, this brand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You won't have to fight over the one good spatula. <laughs> yeah, totally. Tea towels come in twice a week. Yeah, that's true, actually. Just list just list the, All the amount of shit. stuff. Yeah. All the equipment that you have. Because that's the same ad as everywhere. Up to date uh, Ignoring equipment. all that... Uh, Bloody, we create mouthfeel meals and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, because it doesn't matter if you're trying to create umami. If you don't have the utensils for me to do so, then I don't want to know about it. Who said, oh, Christ, what did it say? Black garlic. I love black garlic. And pomegranate, pomegranate molasses. molasses. Like she's just invented it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't put pomegranate molasses next to black garlic either. Uh... <laughs> I don't think there's nothing they umami. knew what they were talking <laughs> yeah, about. Yeah, there's nothing umami about pomegranate molasses. I, okay, I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> I don't want to talk about umami. Yeah. Salt is umami if you want to get into well, it. Well, people of our generation don't even know what umami is. No. Nah. We're just like, salt? This is a clothing brand? <laughs> Man, that was hilarious. Do you know what else she said? No service. But then went on to tell you about what the menu was like. It started out being like, this is hardcore as fuck. Like, and then it was you, like, but you don't have to do anything. Yeah, but where are you putting that food? Um, this amazing produce and these umami flavours, are they going to customers or not? So there's the experience, they're looking for experience in high volume cooking in production kitchens or who is, this doesn't even read well, or who is looking to move from a busy restaurant environment to a kitchen without the pressure. So they're basically like, who's good at like cooking but what are they good cooking? and fast? Hello Fresh or something. But wants to work in an exciting company that produces food and products to be proud of. I don't know. It's a Hello Fresh ad. They just need some line cooks. Well, yeah, I didn't even clock that. It says our recipes. Yeah, I didn't even clock that. Mm. I was just reading it was like... It's another ghost kitchen. Like an a la carte. 40 seed or something, yeah. Yeah, because it's supposed to... Look how it's reading. It's oh, the most inspirational of yeah. ad you've ever heard in your life. Yeah, I reckon you'd get there and just then they're starting to, like, blast chill um, takeaway container meals. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're like, you're like, okay, you're on, like, seven trays of lasagna. You're like, mmm. But it's the best produce you'll ever have in your life. You said you were liked. You said you, said you were good at fast-paced environments. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they just throw it back in your face. Yeah. They're like, I'm having a real tough time. They're like, well, you said you liked it. So is it f- um, less paste or more paste, would you say, from your last... <laughs> Do you think a chef can go into the <coughs> HR department like two months into their new job and be like, you said that this was a no-service, high-production, umami-flavoured place, but this is just every pub I've ever worked at in my life. Yeah, because pomegranate molasses has definitely has a place in things, but not the way people use it. They just use it to squiggle mm. at, the, at, the, at the corners of the square plates at those sort of pubby places. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Black garlic's cool. That's what so hilarious, man. I just want enough tea towels and enough utensils yeah. and a good squeegee. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Just say on the fucking ad, say... We get tea towels delivered three times a week, or some, just say yeah. something that's true. I just want to know, like, what happens during service. No uh, one's going to shred that down either. They're going to go, you know what? Yeah. The it's kitchen, kind of all I've ever. It's kind of 
I'm getting erect reading this ad. Like, yeah. there is no place on the planet like this. Yeah. The kitchen hands deal with the floor, and the head chef organizes the cool room. Sold. Yeah, <laughs> actually, that is a good way of thinking about it. Is like that these these media people or their person that can't spell or use spell check or form um, keys of sentences. Mm are trying to uh, project their uh, their place as the best. You have to work here. You can't work anyone else. This is the best place to ever work. It's it's all for you. Yeah. But realistically, what you want to hear f- to get that result is literally we always have dry tea towels. Mm. You don't have to hide them. The head, chef, the head chef is barely there, but he'll jump in if you need it. Yeah. All the above. We, we have two kitchen hands at any one time. All that sort of shit. Yeah, I just want to know end of day pack down. Yeah. Just give me the routine. Yeah. Because like if I have to, like I love a good pack down and a good clean. Yeah, where the drains wrong. are. Yeah. Are, those, are they going to do the floors and then do I have to finish everything that I've done and then go into the cool room and organize and check the produce? Yeah. Because if I don't have to do that, you got me. Because saying umami and molasses at me doesn't get me excited about food either. No. Like because all this other shit is what your day is. Yeah. It's not... That that is never, by the way. That is never like. <laughs> w- when do you ever do like never. menu writing? <laughs> menu writing never. is like while you're cooking, you might sit down and there'll be other flogs there, and you're like, "Cool, this is what I was thinking." They go, "Hmm, what about pomegranate molasses?" You know, and then you're like, "Ugh." Yeah, but that's like a fraction. That's the first that's year a apprentice. Fraction of your like, like a quarter of a year. Like, it, yeah. it's nothing. Seriously, seasonally, you do that once seasonally, really. How many people came up to you seriously in your chef career and said, "Dude, the umami in this is fantastic." Yeah. How many times? How did you nail the umami? I never. But had I don't even know how to say it. I never had it happen to me until like the last three years of my career, and no one ever said it to me directly, but they said it, the word around. Yeah, but yeah, but how did people take it in the kitchen? Just like it was like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, the only way when the only Master time Chef it was ever used said. properly was like when we were doing Asian dishes, we were trying to nail Asian dishes, and they're yeah. like, "How's the umami factor?" And we're like, "Yeah, okay, I think you got it." Yeah, I, I get what it's like. We're, we're confusing our knowledge of what it actually means compared to like, do we like it mm. or use it? I get it, but it was never technically. It's used. that like, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no one said it. They just said like. So we would ba- like balance shit like that with stuff like aged soy, bit of fish sauce, something black garlic. Was actually, she nailed that. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying she, definitely she. Um, <laughs> totally. Yeah. No man would write that. Right. <laughs> or you'd use the you'd use the there's like a cool reduced mush uh, those mushroom soys yes. as well. Yeah, yeah, they're great. Anything like that, but I would throw them in like French consommes and things like that, and mm-hmm. no one would know, mm-hmm. and you could. You could go all if that was on Master Chef, they would say umami all day. Yeah. If someone saw you do that, yeah. oh, is that the umami factor? Yeah, but have you noticed? Is that a factor out of ten? They've never been able age. to explain it either. They just say umami and move on. Yeah, they never explained it. No one goes, wait, what? Yeah, what did you say, hold on. We was it? And also, <laughs> after last week, everyone has checked in and said that stop that saying Master umami Chef, and remember to fucking turn your oven on. Master Chef food is cold. It's it's done. Yep. People came in and they said it. So there's no way that you're going to get an umami factor on a cold dish. Well, if it's cold, you can do the drizz of the pomegranate molasses over the top. Oh, and then now that's and then a go, 10. And everyone on the balconies up goes... Ooh. <gasps> Tommy, Tommy, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> I love the trash talk on those balconies, though. Yeah. Like, because you know you're mic'd up. Yeah. You know you're a part of a show. You yeah, know there's a camera on you, and you're still going to just trash talk. The editing is hilarious too because they've they always uh, they 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 see someone spiral, <laughs> and I still don't believe it's do. in sequence. <laughs> the balcony is never in sequence. There's no way. Ah, the editing. Well, that makes sense. This is just because I like watching these bits of people spiraling out of control and watch it. So they're, they're doing like, then they'll do a 360. There's fucking bowls everywhere. They don't need one. They got eight. Uh-huh. Everything's dirty. And then they'll be like, keep getting this. One of them's like, keep getting in there. Keep getting in. Like just no help at all. Just cheering on the fact that you're out of control and in a, like you're in your own shit. Yeah. But that's cheer worthy. Like 
You've so got then, this. All right, so you're just recording the balcony and then yeah. using it as you want as the editor. Yeah, I think I mean ah. they're doing it, but not in the time that they're in the ah, shit. That makes sense. Of and course. then someone will be someone will literally try and help them. Like, you need to um, turn the oven on, or you need to turn that down. Make sure you fucking do this. Like something to help them. You're like, okay, at least you tried. Yeah. And then there's another person that's just like they just shit talk, and they'll be like. <laughs> I don't know if she's going to make she's it out. Really of, messing it I don't up. know if she's going to get out of this. Yeah, That's and then cool. they move on. Do you know what the best show would be? Those and they're the just—they're always whisking at this stage and burning their hands on the fucking yeah. <laughs> Sabaons. <laughs> the the second show should be <laughs> Master Chef only has one dishwasher, and there's just a whole show dedicated to him cleaning yeah. all of the shit those fucks use. Yep. How it's, good would that show it's be? It's a great idea. I would watch that. Yeah. And he's just running backwards and forwards and he's trying to, like, get them in the dishwasher. He's only got one dishwasher, three crates. You know the three-crate system? Yeah. One's in, stacking one, empty one. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Why these fuckers use seven bowls for, like, whipped cream? Yeah. And he can trash talk them as well a little bit. You yeah. Know? You know how dishwashers used to trash talk you? Like, they didn't want to get out of line. They wouldn't get two in you because you, you're going to fire off. Yeah. But they give you little niggles. Yeah. You can niggle the chefs. Yeah. I'd the, watch the that. The good ones. I'd watch that. If you had someone that was constantly trying to pick up hot pans without a tea towel <laughs> and they gave you even the slightest bit of shit, you'd be like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah. Because you don't want to say it. You say, oh, tea towel, bro. You don't want to like, mm. you don't want to say you're being a dickhead every time you burn yourself. But look, like, how many times are you got to burn yourself before you? The yeah. shit hurts, man. Doesn't matter how many times you do it, you don't want it. Is there a way that we can get people to post us pictures of their hot pan buckets? Do you remember those yeah. hot pan buckets? And like some of They're them are always just old crates just melting just away, holding slowly. on for dear life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's like for some reason there's no water coming out the bottom, but it's got like all the marks in the side that yeah. are like a poof deenth off, yeah. exploding. How do those? How do those like plastic crates do it? Perfect. Like, Plastic is a beautiful product. Yeah. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. In in Perth, the biggest ones you would get were the fresh cork crates, and they're either like um, fluorescent, fucking green, or blue. And that's all I remember because the biggest one you want the biggest one you can get. Yeah. And then they had always also had the biggest, the nicest handles. Yeah. So even that, the kitchen hands were like, I want that one. Did so you it, fill them with water or no? Uh, oh, these were just like to throw hot pans in. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know what you mean about... You th throw them with water. Yeah, and you put water in them and they go... But like, sometimes you don't. Yeah, I never like the water because you can get... Uh, the, you have to... It's hard to... It loses some of this like natural seasoning or non-stick. Yeah, Depending, yeah. Oh, actually, it depends on the pan. If they're non-stick pans, like, who gives a fuck? Yeah. Chuck them in the water. But if you're using like those blue steel ones or the uh, carbon ones... It's also a pain what, in the ass. To what are they called? What are those heavy... Fucking cast no. Yeah, cast iron. Are they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you throw them in water, you're fucked. So you'd I'd rather burn through a like a yeah. vegetable crate. Then. We used to have no water when I was an apprentice in these white. No steel wool. Crates, Frosty steel wool. But people fucked. would throw hot pans into these no water plastic. Oh yeah, things, just and they just slowly melt away. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that. And you're that. like pan collect. Yeah, <laughs> it's this melting bucket. I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen a um, one with water in. Yeah, I just feel like it'd be too school. heavy. Yeah, too heavy and too much yeah. of a pain in the ass. Yeah, you just, but I mean, I, yeah, you just lose all your shit. Like a clean pan washed properly. But also, if I'm without the steel hand, wool or anything, you, it'll it'll just the fish won't stick. The everything won't stick. Yeah, but if those motherfuckers are like burning shit and then throwing a hot pan into a water bucket, yeah, it's making my day. So much easier. For the kitchen hands, it's great, yeah. yeah. Especially with soap, too. Well, actually, now I do we remember that. We used to that. put soap in it. Yeah, but they were like, um, they weren't like by you, though. They, they would have to be closer to the his dishwasher. There's no way. The, I, would, uh, I don't want anyone fucking dragging a water thing through the kitchen. Yeah, true. I do remember that happening, but that's such yeah. an old school idea. Yeah. Imagine it had wheels. That's... Next level. Yeah, but then it would depend on the floor and what you got chocking it up. It'd just be another... I've got mats down, of course. I've got stinky silicon mats that you're going to have to go... Do, 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 yeah, do, I was going to say, do, what's the point of wheels? <laughs> It'd be easier dragging it. Yeah, I don't know. You've yeah. made a bad choice. Who knows? Yeah. 
Now what was once war, <laughs> cold water is now hot water all over here. All right, so now I'm putting wooden plank down over my mats. Duk, 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 duk. The only way to do it is disposable pans. copper pans. Yeah, <laughs> Just throw them. It's $200 of pasta. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> One pan of pasta and she's gone. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, you got, you got someone in the corner trying to season them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even when your plates are finished, they just throw everything in a bin. Totally. That's high level stuff. Um, chef Ed's fucking oh, sweet. <laughs> I thought of this story. This has nothing to do with chefing. I'm just going to say it anyway. I remember this story. I found a phone on the. I was working for. I was selling cheese. Um, and I was in a truck. And I, f- I saw this iPhone on the ground. It was all smashed up. And I picked it up and I was like, oh, I'll just find the owner. And like it had been run over. And mm-hmm. I found the owner. And then some woman was I, – I, I text the last number that text that ra- – sorry, the last number that rang her, I texted – it was definitely her because of the messages. I was mm-hmm. like, well, I'll just text someone and say, I've found this person's phone. Do you know where I can take it to? That's the idea. It was my idea. So I tried to ring the last person who rang her. And then a couple of times, and then I texted that number and said this. And then, like, this woman knocked on my window, and she was like, you got my phone? And she was, like, real rude about it. And I was like, oh, fair enough. Like, I'm stolen it. I mean, my work crew or whatever, it's from the phone. She's like, it's all fucked up. I was like, yeah, it was on the road. I got ran over. Uh-huh. And I said, oh, I mean, but she was very used on my phone about it. So I was like, just so you know, I've just texted someone in your contacts to try and find you. So don't give, give me all this shit, right? Yeah. I've tried. And look, we found you. And then she's like, I don't know what I'm going to do my thing. I was like, oh, I've always had a cracked screen. You can take it there. I'm trying to help her. And she's like, who did you message? And I told her whatever, whoever's name it was, this bloke. And she just started fucking losing her shit, crying. She like squatted down in the middle of the road. She was like losing her shit. I was like, what the fuck? I don't want this in my life. What? Also, I can't move the truck because she's in front of me. Yeah. Um, I've got Jarlsberg to deliver. Get the fuck out of the way. Um, Jarlsberg. Um, so <laughs> yeah. so she said she eventually came to. She was like... Traumatic experience. Yeah, like panic attack shit. Like I said, you want to get in the car because it's got air con? I said, like, you want to sit down? She was, she was fucked up. What a up. nice guy. So she got in the truck. I would not invite her into my surroundings, that's for sure. Um... I would say, do you want to go in the back of the truck? Yeah, you seem like the kind of bloke that would ignore someone else <laughs> yeah, having a totally. panic attack. <laughs> um, but also I didn't know, because I texted this person, so it, this is what started it, was me saying I contacted this bloke. <laughs> All right, the suspense is killing me. Yeah, but also like knowing fucking fun stories, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm a story guy, and yeah, I'm on yeah. the clock, let's be honest. <laughs> so get in the car, get in the truck, and I was, she's like in there. She calmed down. She, she was like, <laughs> I couldn't talk, right? Proper. So I was like, what the fuck? And she said, this bloke, it was her um, partner, and he died. So the last phone call she has um, is of him, and she deletes everyone above it. And then I've texted him. I've texted a dead guy and said, that I've lost your phone. And she had just had this attack about, yeah. And wow. Then, yeah, and I said, like, uh, do you reckon he'll message back? Like, oh, yes. Yeah, and it brought her around. Did it? yeah. Humor does that. That's what comedy is good for. Yeah, that's why you need to be a good bloke and like a I knew you attend to these stage. people's needs. Yeah. See, I knew. Yeah, you could be a comedian. Yeah, I'm the funny guy out of this, right? Yeah, yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> I don't know why I remember that. I remember that today because I remember the crack screen. I was like, "Fuck!" I remember when I, I picked up that dead guy's phone. I tried yeah. to ring a dead guy. That's also. Do you want to know what he said? Because it's pretty interesting. That's a weird set of actions from her. But I no, but I left a message. That's what she didn't like about it. it no, but I, she's deleting everyone else's. She calls. hadn't got over it. Hadn't even had the funeral yet. Uh, yeah. So I'd left a. I'd to left leave a, his. I'd left death. a voicemail from from her to him, and on on her phone, and she was like, "You can't do that. You can't do that." And I was like, "Well, I did it." Yeah. Yeah. It's practical. I was like, "I just stole your phone, bitch." But I get it. Um, anyway, I don't know why That's I remember That's hilarious. That. It's pretty funny. These things uh, happened in the, my life. Did she just get out of the car at some point and move on with her life? Yeah. She wanted to give me money too. I gave her some cheese. I gave her some camembert. This I, I gave her a situation. I gave her a conqueron. I gave her all kinds of shit. <laughs> why? She's just crying after a panic attack well, with like ch- an arm full of cheese? you got to think. Like, you <laughs> yeah. gotta, you got to appreciate how, many, how much free cheese you know, I was giving out of this job as well. You know ladies. 
They love cheese. But now she's just holding on to this camembert because it's the last thing oh, she, she had to no her way. Dead she had no reason to carry around this. Cheese. Like when someone goes into her fridge and they're like, "Oh, I'm just going to eat something," and she's like, "Not the camembert!" <laughs> Bang! It's panic got, attack. She's got no use by date. She's like, "When's the use by?" Never. So it only gets better. Yeah. Until you die. This cheese will last longer than your husband will. Do you want some cheese for the funeral? Mm. Cheese for the wake? A cheese board at a wake? Yeah. Tasteful or not good? Cheese board at a wake? Mm. I don't think people think about that. I've, I've actually catered wakes. No. Yes, and they're fucking in- they're so interesting. That's a good one. It, the, obviously, the vibe is at a zero, <laughs> below the gr- six feet below the ground, right? Because you can't come in and be like, so I've done happy. two wakes, yeah. not not personally, but like it for catering companies, yeah. like a two chef team. Tell me, but you're you're so, um, I'm just the way I am with everyone. Obviously, with like someone dies, I'd like yeah. Hey yo, do you want to call him? Oh, I mean, a woman has a panic attack. You crack a joke. Do you want to call him? Yeah, <laughs> um, I think you should call him for some closure. Yeah, I mean, I called him. You can too. <laughs> so. Uh, the one I remember was just because they're always just at random houses. They're not like you're going to uh, to Swan Valley or anything, you know, anything weird. They're always at random person's houses. No one knows. Oh. Half of them don't seem to know the person's house. It's just awake. But you roll up early like you normally do. And there's never anyone there. So you, you kind of like, mm-hmm. there's like, I've done two. But I've talked about this to other people in the past. It's like, wakes are weird. And they're like, yeah, they always leave you the key. Because, so, like, we don't know what time we'll be back. We don't want to be there. No one wants to deal with you. We're going to be upset. You know what I mean? So it's like, so there would always be a key left. And you just let yourself in the house for possibly the dead person lived. Yeah. Possibly. And we just set up. And then you kind of, um, there was, the one I remember is because I was like, so this key was just under the mat. It was like, well, you got the right address. Like, I just thought, I just started to think things. Yeah, because they up, imagine. Because they were so late. Well, they were, they were like 20 minutes late, but there was no, like, stragglers or I was like, wait. Someone early. Or have we just, like, let ourselves in? Because it's exactly where you would leave a spare key. Yeah, and you and set up a wake in someone else's house? Yeah. Horrible. Yeah. <laughs> so I laughed about that, obviously. I mean, <laughs> we're still going to sit. When we, when, we, when we get charged for, like, break and enter, we're yeah. still going to give them some party pies and shit. Yeah. <laughs> But the, the vibe is so bad because everyone is the nicest person to you, right? But they're all like, thank you very much. You know, it's a sad time, right? Yeah. But you're not sad. You don't know the person. So you're, you're completely out of your zone. It is a sad time, but also and people you're offer out of you order so for much being booze, dude. happy. Do they? Yeah. Do you want a drink? You guys are off a drink? A drink. It's, it's, it's like universally allowed. What it, kind of food have you got? It's just the same as everyone else. Catapays or little quiche. These were like little things, yeah, yeah, yeah. All these little handmade little quiches. Rolls? Yep, S- yep. And what else do we have? We had some like bigger platters, which were like prawns, carrot, and carrot sticks. It's just like let's feed these people a bit. It's not like a, you know, uh, it's not like a long table lunch. It's just hilarious. like hilarious. Yeah, and then like do the, people come up and eat sadly? So this catering company, you'd have like. Well, at least, at least one person doing the food, right? Yeah. And then you'd have like a front of house, the person is walking around with the food. Oh. And they'd always get back and be like... Someone <laughs> walking around? Yeah. And you'd always feel bad for like just eating one of them because you're like extra bad, just like... Dude, someone's walking around offering people at a wake small bits of food. Yeah, it's a wake. It's yeah. yeah, and they're just like... It's a celebration of life, thank Tim. Thank you. It's not. You have no empathy, I hey? It should be a celebration of life. Yeah, see, I don't want anyone in my funeral, like, wearing black. I think this thing is fucking retarded. Hawaiian T-shirts. 100% Hawaiian. Hawaiian, big hats. Yes. What's something that is... Firecrackers. What's something that you thought was cool 20 years ago don't quite fit into? Wear that. Yeah. Yeah. Dunlop chicken shoes. Chicken suit. Chicken, any, any Halloween shit you it's never Halloween wore? Halloween yeah. in April. Yep. And then... And ga- fight. Do you know what you want? You want a Mexican funeral. And then That's gather around. Want. And then you can, instead of getting up in front and saying what a good guy I was or fake it or whatever, yeah. just get up and explain how you got the outfit that you have on. Yeah, yeah. And and just know that if there is a fucking afterlife, I'm going, ah, fuck yeah. yeah, yeah. And some stories. Yeah. If there's if you've got a story, get oh, up. Of course. But I just think like. Crack it out. And do you know what they need? They need someone funerals, who's really good at guitar to 
like he, there's just one guy backing backtracking anyone's story. Yeah. You know what I mean? We've got a drummer and one guitarist. I'm going to start a story. You motherfuckers are the backing track. Keep up. Yeah. Or and anyone can do it. Or just like a snare drum and a cymbal. That's it. And just have what someone's kid on there. So every time they think something's funny, just go. Yeah. Shoo, shoo. Everyone's trying yeah. to crack jokes and tell the worst story that they can in a Hawaiian T-shirt with a party pie. Yeah, but the be- if you just kept it to, yes. But if you just kept it to how did you buy this item, mm. I think that would be quite Zero funny. Zero acknowledgement of your death. Yeah. Is how, yeah, that's how you'd want to go out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then maybe right. Like at the I'm end. in a coffin, but I'm not. I'm not here. That's and then okay. maybe right at the end, yeah. <coughs> Say something, yeah. But Western people do the worst wakes out of anyone. Yeah. Everyone else is like. So I think Mexican people like are definitely yeah. African people. Get all the emotions out real early. Yeah. A lot of wailing. Go go hard on the despair. Real yep. quick, and then party. Yeah. Despair party, and I'm I'm in that. Have you seen those um, Cajun ones? The They have the full bands. It's just like a parade, but it's not like a parade for a president. It's just like... Um, th- Old mate died. Yeah. Yeah, let's, I love that. Let's get after it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's have a good one. Yeah. But why do we have to be outrageously sad? I don't know. It also brings the mood down. Definitely. Because someone died. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I think you're allowed to be sad. So that's I've, always, I'm, I've always... Yeah, yeah. I've always thought that. I've always thought that this is what I want to go out like mm. or is this what I want people to do. And also, if I write it down and then I'm dead, you got to do it, suck shit. Like, you, there's no one going, I'm not dressing up. Like, you fucking are. You have to, brother. You fucking are. Everyone's in it. Imagine you're the one person in black when everyone else is Hawaiian. Yeah. My daughter would ridicule you. She'd be like, bitch, go home, change. Mm. Yeah. Thankfully, we bought 10 extra Hawaiian shirts and everyone's got to wear one, fuckhead. <laughs> yeah. What size are you? Medium? Oh, we got to give him the small. Yeah. <laughs> no, the small. Go the other way. <laughs> yeah. I don't get it, man. I mean, because I, I mean, I personally am not that scared of death. Are you scared nah. of dying? Well, what would happen? I don't Are you just scared of not being here anymore? But, no. Hmm. But, no. But, like, I mean, nothing's, like, you're not here to worry yeah. about it. <laughs> I don't know what but we are, as people, scared of death, right? Like, as a society. Yeah. Completely. And also scared to, um, I guess, death somebody. Like, you, you, you don't want to do it. You don't want to, like, uh, harm them so they'll die. Or yeah. Totally. Or even talk them into self-harm. Or anything like that. Well, so we it's don't like, want to, even worse, we don't even want to unplug them from life support yeah. and be the person that yeah. made a decision for something. That's, so you'd rather keep someone alive in a room, in a hospital, yeah. plugged up, than just be like, bro, get out of here. I, th- I think that's real selfish. I think, I mean, people take things differently. I get it. It's real selfish to say, look, my grandma, she, was, she had a stroke and she was completely done. Like in a bed, this is exactly that, right? Just waiting. No quality of life. She doesn't know she's even... Know what the fuck she's doing? And she, she wasn't know. the... I was young, or maybe, I don't know, 16? And I was like, this isn't my grandma, by the way. I'm yeah. not coming here to see my grandma. I don't want to. There's a meat sack. And there's like, it's the room is like horrible. Like, it was a nice room, but it was like, oh, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here ever again. It's yeah, just because there's nice curtains doesn't mean it's yeah. a nice place to be. But it wasn't my grandma. She's just there going, eh, what? Mm. You know? But then they gave us that option. She went, and you're like, can we just, why is there a thought? Why is there any thought? But people won't want to do it. People they don't are want like, to no, be, I don't want to yeah. do this. And I also saw, um, well, well, one of my aunts anyway, um, then pretend that she gave a fuck. When yeah, yeah. all my life, all I'd seen is her just not give a fuck. And then she then she was the one that took it way too far. And she we can't possibly. Uh, what are we justice. going to do? I can be here on a Tuesday. You know, all this is shit. Yeah, and you're like, yeah. where were you for the last 10 years? Where were you for the last 20 years? Social justice warriors. It's yeah. the same It's thing. the keyboard warrior bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the just same promises, shit. promises, 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 promises. Yeah. As soon as I can manifest it into people caring about me and my emotions, I care now so deeply about my mum. No, I care more. 
but yeah, why don't like if, if people gave a little bit less of a fuck about dying? Like I think back in the day, I think people, people should cared. care because like I want okay, so it's not death, maybe for me anyway. It's like I want to hang around for my daughter. I think it's fun as fuck and my wife. Yeah, just my life. Whatever my life is now, I want to hang around and see what goes on and yeah, yeah, fun shit. Um, I get that, but if you got to go, but just go. Like I'm not scared of dying. No. Nah. Mine comes from a few DMT trips. Right. And a lot of acid. Yeah, I can see that a lot for of you. Integration yep. of mushrooms in my life. Yeah. I've come to those points. Got that vibe. Yeah. <laughs> it's tattooed on my arm. But anyway. <laughs> Same. You never asked why there's a why there's a skull with a bunch of eyes <laughs> wrapped around it. No. You just thought, oh, Tim likes cool pictures. No, I just, I just have like, uh, I'm just a, a very nice person. I think I get to this thing. Most people think that's where you put the heroin. Yeah, that, that is a thing about me. I never ask stuff. Yeah. Like if you ask my wife that sort of shit, you're like, yeah, that's lucky. He doesn't. Yeah, he's seen it. He's like, yeah. Are but not interested in. I just think people, uh, everyone's got something allowed to do their shit. Allowed to do whatever you want to do. Mm. You know. Yeah, but I think other cultures. If you had like pig cunt on your forehead yeah I'd say bro anything on the forehead what's the uh, PC thing about yeah, yeah anything but it, that's forehead. what the chatter would be like. it was like why'd you do that mm. it would be like hey man tell me about that got a, got a question for you <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but only western society I don't think other societies they have better rituals around uh, yeah Anglo, Anglo-Saxon it's all, it's all the all the Christianity and the Roman Catholics and all this sort of stuff right yeah like that's what I is it the burials at least? I know that shit. Is this that's too that's technical to think that like what if when people died you just like fertilized a tree with them rather yeah. than putting them in um, graves and sitting them there with headstones and shit? Yeah. Like what if we gave back? Yeah. Or is that practical and not at all ritual? No. It'd be, it, well, it, w- it would work too well. Like you know, when you you bury a dead cat by a fucking lemon tree, it goes ape shit. Oh, yeah, Do yeah you know it's everything fish, it ever wants. Oh, fish yeah. under anything. Yeah, a fish carcass. It's oh. the best compost ever. That's why I kill all the gutter cats I see around my house. Yeah. Just fucking put them. Dude, in. you'd be the best lemon tree I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just see, you see a cat go meow. You're like <laughs> fucking lemons. Yeah, yeah. I'd want to be. Yeah, I would want to be an oak tree. Yeah, I was thinking oak, but I like those. Um, those sort of boab ones that are just so oh. antisocial. I think that's more me. Just out in the desert? Yeah, just like thriving where you shouldn't be. Well, no one else is around. And don't get near me because I've got all the nutrients. Just that's why, and it's just big. Gets real fat. Yeah. Just doesn't stop getting fat. Yeah. You're yeah. a desert boab. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. Desert boab. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty. <laughs> I'm pretty desolate myself. I would say. I think I'm a big oak. Yeah. No, I feel like I'm a team player. I'd be a bunch of oaks. I'd be out there. You're, so now you want more than one tree for your <laughs> human remains? But have you ever seen the, um, I think, the magic life of trees? It's a documentary and nope. so trees uh, communicate to each other so. through their root systems in the ground. They don't even have to be the same tree. All trees communicate through mycelium uh, with electrical pulses and stuff mm-hmm. to tell each other how much nutrients and how they're going and then redistributing the nutrients that they have in well, the that, forest. Well, that means there's really selfish ones out there too, though, right? Yes. Like real selfish trees. They're only it for themselves. Because yeah. I've seen that even just in life. You go, the fuck? If you remove, like, yeah, like weeds as well. Weeds are weeds yeah. will pop up anywhere there's a space. Weeds are like, I'll take it. Yeah, but they take everything. They're not communicating. And even if yeah. they are, they're going, oh, yeah, no worries. Right, but in a yeah. garden, if you're already there, if you're a capsicum tree, weeds aren't going to take over. But if you fuck off, they're like, it's mine. I'll take it. There's definitely something. Here to, oh, no, that's all fungus that does that. They just, like, grab the roots and take all the shit. There are. There are funguses that um, feed off everything. Or something but like. then also there's all the mycelium, the fungus. Most of them are, like the webs between everything else that create the communication. That yeah, that's the how all the truffles spawn and everything. Yeah, hmm. which are fungus yeah. as well, right? Mm-hmm. Super interesting. Yeah, but there are ones that will just literally sap a tree or there are ones, well, most of them, I guess, work together, create something. Yeah. There are people like, uh, yeah, there's always, yeah, there's always those folks out there. 
Those fungus folks? Those fungus folks. Causing Bad trouble. fungus. All right. What if you're a dead body? You get to pick the fungus. They bury you under whatever tree you want. Yeah, okay. New tree or old tree? It doesn't matter, does it? You kind of want to see one growing up though, right? Like it's kind of boring. If you put like, if you, okay, number one, you got to bury someone under an already existing tree. Tough. True. I want to see it happen, but I reckon it'll be tougher. The amount of people that are dying and the amount of trees that we need to plant to keep this world going, I feel like that's a good practical solution. I'm still thinking like you got to bend the dead body over to plant it so it's like more compact too. All oh, right. But maybe I'm just thinking of actually probably longer you'd want the, the wider fertilization of what's going on. Yeah. You get a wider compost maybe. <laughs> so like maybe that'd be better for the future, like for the growth of the tree. <laughs> or do you want it like compact? So you want to like get the body all tangled up yeah. and then plant it on top to help it initially, to help it thrive straight away. I just had the most can you, oh, dude, can you imagine if that tree died? Well, that's it. Straight away? Imagine that's if okay. it dies straight away. That's okay. Yeah, I'm okay with it, but dude. That's your karma from your life. Yeah, I knew. Okay. And now we judge everyone by the tree that they grow when yeah. they die. <laughs> I've met a few dead trees, eh? Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking about getting a wood chipper and just having a body and just like directing it at a tree and just being like, <laughs> and just splattering a tree. And they're just being like, oh, amen. <laughs> Tim's going to be a good That's oak. That's actually a funny way to go, man. Like if that was the Hawaiian <laughs> wedding, oh, sorry, Hawaiian funeral. You're in a Hawaiian shirt and they just throw you in a wood chipper. But then just like at the end of it, just go, <laughs> just go <laughs> drop me from, like I'm already there and just <laughs> s- slightly tilt it up a little bit more and just slide me in. You just do this great ceremony, but then at the end of it, it's just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> or do like a Banksy and then whatever that projects on, yep. that's the art and you get to keep the art as a, uh, yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. Splattered art. Anything better than like drawing out the the bones or whatever. Anything better like burning or than one, stuffing you in a wood box, word. putting you in the ground, everyone having a bad time at a party and moving on and never talking about it again. Yeah, and never visiting the... I'd rather a cemetery be like a strawberry farm. Still bury them. And you can have the, you know, stick in the ground saying that's your yeah, you know, grandma this or whatever. strawberry patch was Nana fucking come, Barb. Come, at least you would go down and see your Nana. Like, <laughs> I would. Yeah. Hey, these are my strawberries, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, but something that's not like, let's go see. But then what do you do? I always struggle to be like, okay, let's go see. And then what, what are we going to do then? Dude, I've never been to um, a gravesite to see a deceased family member. To see a rock. It's not my vibe. Yeah, but it's nothing to do. Like, I think about my pop still sometimes. My nana just died recently. I think about her. Yeah. Um, I still got one grandma alive. She's 97. I, I, I get people that do that, though, because, like, that is a process for them, is to go places... Um, and maybe even talk to a tombstone. I don't know. Sure. Sure. And if you want to do it, do it. Yeah, and I'm not judging it at all. Um, but I don't like, get it, though. Yeah, I'm... Yeah. I think it's a different attitude towards death, where it's like, oh, no, you died. What a horrible thing. It's like, man, everyone dies and goes back to the universe. Yeah. We're all going back to something. Yeah, this, this world is so much bigger than just Earth, humans... <laughs> Death, suffer, you know? Yeah. Yeah. you got to go somewhere. Although if Carrie Ann died, I'd be pretty pissed. We spread uh, my other grandma's ashes at Kings Park on one of the trees. See? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. You're already doing it. Yeah. Fertilise that. Because I'm awesome. I don't know if I'd sprinkle it. I'd probably want to dig a hole, put it around a root, stuff her in there. I think if you're going to do it, like if you're going to do it, and we obviously are the experts at this, mm. check the wind. Definitely. Which way is the wind going? Don't cover yourself with granddad. Definitely. And if Which you, has happened. And also don't give – check. Oh, can you imagine if there's a blowing wind and you just gave it to the kid? <laughs> oh, it happened 100 – people off cliffs where they're like, oh, <laughs> right in the face. 
What does granddad taste like? Yeah. And not even to you. What's even worse is you throw it, it hits your kid in the face. Yeah. Don't swallow granddad. That's that's like all those, um, what are the, the the pink and the blue ones, the gender reveal parties? <laughs> yeah. Where they all go wrong? Grandfather they're the, reveal. They're the absolute best where they've tried so hard to make this perfect. Yeah, You're like, yeah. how is this ever going to go perfect? Yeah. You throw in this baseball. You're supposed to hit it. The kid gets hit. The thing goes off too early. Yeah. Someone dies. And yeah, then they're I, like, I oh, congrats, was, you're having a boy and you already knew it. I saw there was one with a drone and the drone was supposed to pop the balloons, but it cr- it didn't and it crashed into somebody in the... Standard. Yeah, that's reveal just, party. That's, just, that's how they go, I think. That's the, only reason, that's the only way they go. If they don't yeah. fail, it's pretty boring. I. How about this? There's never going to be a happy chef at a gender reveal party. I'm not taking my day off to your gender reveal party. What well, was, was about to say is, well, I'd never be there, so I would never know. Thank God. Yeah. And the reason that I work is so I don't have to do those shit. And be like, oh, I'm not good with surprises. You just let me know. Is it a boy? Is it a boy? Yeah, All right, I'm, I'm never going to see you. I don't care if it's... I don't care. I know you don't care, <laughs> but these are the small things I do to make people think that I do care about ah. you. Yeah. I can't really make it, but if you just let me know what it, the boy is... Yeah. Yeah, is it a boy or a girl? Give it don't. I wouldn't even phrase it like that. No. I'd be like, well, you all know you're having a boy. And then if they go, nah, you know, yeah. it's a girl. Or if they're left eye Or if they go, who told you it's a boy? Or, yeah. They itch themselves like that? Now you know. I already know. Mm. I don't have to, yeah. <laughs> the poker tool. Speaking of uh, Kings Park, I used to walk back from... Um, work because I used to park illegally in the park because it was free. Mm-hmm. So I used to walk back from work across the bridge in the city, and um, sometimes I'd have these awesome um, what do you call them? Uh, concerts in the park. It was all people like, but you could sneak in at that time and just sit at the back because actually in the park. It's dark. You just walk through the back of the botanical gardens and get in, mm. and just watch people like Elvis Costello and Pearl Jam and Pearl Jam, Cat Stevens, whatever his name is. Use of Islam. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, not Pearl Jam. Sorry. Um, Eddie Vedder. Same. 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 Yeah. Um, all kinds of people. Um, David Gilmore. But there was no barrier up that you. Were so it already started. Yeah. But obviously, you get the, like by the time the work finished, maybe eleven thirty, something like that. Oh, no, 11. Actually, maybe at that time, maybe I would have finished about 10, 10.30. Mm. By the time I walked there, you could hear it going on, right? So you mm. just you just walk through the back, sit there, chill on the grass at the back. Wow. That's yeah. great. Yeah. That's a good end to the day. Yeah. I used to have to catch the tram. Maybe I just accidentally I felt, maybe I just accidentally found the right way to walk. It out. And also, it gives a fuck. Oh, it gives a fuck. 20,000 people aren't just flocking to the place without tickets. Yeah. Just one... Homeless looking bloke, tired from work. Yeah, I don't know. Security guys, they're like, oh, I just we've done sh- our job. I just steal a bottle of champagne, take my shoes off on the grass. Champagne from? Uh, the, with, with the work, workplace. And then just, just sip it. And watch these people. That's an amazing day. Yeah. It's best into the night. Yeah. Yep. That's fucking great. Yeah. But you'd never told anyone else from work, like, hey, I do this amazing <laughs> Never. Thing. It's the first time they're finding out. 100%. <laughs> I used to walk with this bloke called Dan, too, back to the car. And he'd be like, oh, I'll see you later. You're like, yeah, I'm just going home. I would even get in the car. Would you? Yep. Start it, <laughs> turn it off, and walk through. <laughs> get fucked. It was the best feeling, too, like taking your shoes off and just being barefoot on the grass. You wouldn't even tell Dan. And No, no, dude. Dan can fuck himself, bro. That's hilarious. Nah, Dan's cool, but um, not cool enough. Well, no one's cool enough for that. Because you want the peace. It's and not quiet. like I'm gonna. I'm not even ringing my wife and saying, "Hey, join me at the Elvis Costello no, concert." No. no, my time. That's bottle it. Bottle of champagne. Did he always wonder why you had a bottle of champagne in your hand as you were? Well, he had two, so no. Fucking hell. Yeah. What a great place. Dan is the champagne thief. That's another story. Fucking champagne thief, Dan. One day, I'll, one day I'll tell it. My the end to my the best end to to me on a clock off shift. Hmm, it's tough. Well, I don't. I don't know. Well, no one asked you, so that's good. Yeah. I love a good walk after a shift. Well, I used to walk 
Like I wouldn't yeah. catch the trams or I would it's, walk up the, the hills. Night, it's the night air. It feels good. And just to get out and get fresh air and I'd walk for a while. Yeah, but I, well, maybe it's just me, but I just like that. I just like the cold, fresh air, the night air. Yeah. And there's not really people around. It's the complete opposite of where you've been for the last 12 hours or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Anti-stimulus. Yeah. Although you're just going into Pearl Jam like, wow. Yeah, but it was like, you're not like in the mosh. There's no mosh at these either, by the way. There's just like a, you ever been to Kings Park, the amphitheater there? I have. It's not even an amphitheater. It's just fucking, uh, just the way it's built is, Mm. was just rolling grass and then there's a stage. Mm. So there's not, and there's a bit of water in front of it. So it keeps sort of, it's a nice, nice venue. Looks awesome. But right at the back is real fun because you just, Far enough away where no one's around, but like, yeah, it feels like you're sort of a part of something. Yeah. You know, it's my King Clark story. I love it. Dan has just found out that he wasn't one of your friends. He knows that. All right, here we go. Hey, guys. I'm a South African chef living in Surrey, UK, and working my way up the culinary ladder. Good for you. Didn't say his name. His name's Dan. Now. You said his name. You already said his name. Hey, guys. No, you didn't. You already said his name. Mm-hmm. South African chef living oh, in right. Surrey. His name's Dan. Does he Cur- have something to say? Yeah. All right. Currently a junior Sue. Nice job. The sweet spot. Is it? Yep. 100%. I always I took agree. it. Agree. I took it. Junior Sue's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just enough responsibility. Can palm off anything too hectic. Anything, yeah, it should come with just like a cooking. little bit of a pay bump from everyone else as well. But all cooking, no paperwork. I'm a huge fan of the podcast. Keep it going. Thank you, Dan. Just listening to episode 12 with all the stories of guys getting locked in the cool room. I've got a story here. I so I was training second year doing free labor in a fancy cocktail bar in a casino in South Africa. It was a busy Saturday night service. I was in the cool room looking for something I needed for section. When I came out, there was a guy standing in the prep kitchen wearing a collared polo. So I assumed he was a rep. So I told Chef on pass that there was a rep here. She then told me that there wasn't meant to be any reps in today, and especially during dinner service. Makes sense? (laughs) Yeah. Makes a lot of sense, Dan. I wouldn't even got this far, Dan. Yeah. It's like, you can leave. A college yeah. shirt in a casino and dinner service? Get the fuck out of here, bro. So we went to investigate, only to find this guy drunk as anything, yeah? He had managed to find his way into the cool room and was attempting to piss against the stock. Nice. He was just desperate for a toilet. Yeah. And he'd got himself caught in a bit of an issue. It's just a drunk guy looking for a piss, yeah. I like that you said against the stock. I don't even think, I think at this point, I don't think he was even looking for a toilet. He's just a bit lost, eh? Yeah, but busting. Or no. Yeah, just keen to get up to mischief. permanently busting at that point. Yeah. I've been this drunk, by the way, in my life, so I, I yeah, am, am resonating with this guy wholeheartedly. I piss in my own <laughs> um, uh, drawers, my own, like, sock drawer. Oh, yeah? One night, I just got up and pissed there, thought it was a toilet. Pulled open the sock drawer. I don't know. It's open. You're in it. I I pissed in it till someone stopped me. Yeah. So you're pissing in a sock drawer. Yeah. I travel with um, two older comedians for the flannel panel, Mm -hmm. Gareth McKean, if you've met him, and Jimmy Curatz. And me and Gareth always have to share a room because Jimmy snores too much. Yeah. But Gareth's like mm, 50 and an absolute legend. But he has this thing where he wakes up in the middle of the night and thinks he's in his house and goes to his toilet in his brain yeah. and pisses. Yeah. Because he's been so used to it for the last 35, 40 years. Right. But we're not in his house. We're in some random hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or someone else's house. To see so just walk into a wall? Yeah. <laughs> he yeah, bumps yeah. into walls. Yeah. I've bump, done that before bump, too. Bump, bump, and then he'll piss. I've done that as well. <laughs> so a lot I, of times. I've had to like... Pull him back. From that sounds more like sleepwalking, though. Yeah, but he's he's sleepwalking with a habit yeah. to his toilet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I – yeah, but I was, like, yeah, drunk as fuck. I yeah. remember doing that. I've been in hotels where I've just got up and walked, but it's been dark. It's not like I had an episode. Mm. It's literally I've got out of bed and walked that way and gone, poof. 
Mm. You're like, oh, I'm in a hotel room. But yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, now I know where yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't just started pissing where I stopped. Yeah. yeah. After not kick- that time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After kicking him out once, he managed to find his way through another entrance to the kitchen. He's back with a vengeance and was attempting to piss in the prep sink again. All right, so this guy's got a fetish. I'm pretty good. I rate that he hasn't... I don't know. He's, he's, he's trying to find a vessel to piss in. No, he could have found one. He did, the stock pot. Yeah, but I feel like he wants to piss here. So, attempting to piss in the prep sink again. Fucking cunt. We know where Dan's at. This was the point where we got armed security in. Being in South Africa, anyone could have a gun. <laughs> and he got kicked the fuck out and a lifetime ban from the casino. How did, he, how did he get... Yeah, that's fair enough. I is guess. South Africa the kind of place where you can have a gun in a casino? Like, they don't pat people down. I don't know. There's guns everywhere there. Yeah. Chris Pacheo is a fucking South African. He says it's a hectic place. I would say, from this story, hilarious. Uh, no good representative of any company is coming in anywhere near a dinner service. How about that? Yeah, I guess so. If you see a rat... I can see that happening, though. At 6pm, he's trying to piss in your sink. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I, I get that, too. Like I said, like oh, I'd tell him to leave. But at some point, you're doing service, and then if you do have a chef on you, are like, that's his problem. You know, like, I get it. <laughs> yeah, no, I thought he would think about it. Palm that off. This guy's trying to piss everywhere, though. I wonder how big this kitchen was. Like, if they had, if there was a casino and they had multiple cool rooms or something, you'd have gone fucking anywhere. Sounds big. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He had a bit of a laugh, though. That was, he was just replying to that, that thing about, um, I think Chase had, he locked somebody in the venue or someone uh, locked in the venue, remember? Mm. And then I had one that, yeah, vomited everywhere and drank all the piss, trying to mm. cook his own meal, yeah. Same, same. I'd hate to go into the cool room and see some polo shirt motherfucker pissing everywhere. That would be a tough... Let's have a chat. Tough get. I'd probably leave. I'd have a chat. I wouldn't want my stock fucked it with. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing that triggered me on that. You can piss in the sink, by the way. Like, piss in the sink. Big fan. Yeah, but if that's, if you saw him twice and he's pissing, like, okay, just fucking do it there. Mm-hmm. You know, At that point, you're like, fuck. And those kind of kitchen sinks where you could probably knee though you know those they have those like level levers? Yeah. Where you water. knee it. So you knee that piss in at the same time, fella. Fine by that. That's cool. Okay, but <laughs> that's like, you think <laughs> I'm just troubleshooting. Yeah, but you think he's capable of that? No, I don't. Yeah. But I want to tell him that because it'd be hilarious. Yeah, but he would turn around and piss. On you? What did you say? That yeah. kind of stuff? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Now it's coming in my direction. I asked for it. That's why I'm a problem solver. Mm-hmm. We, and we just got this DM. Cool. I never I never read it. All right, let's go. It's from Craig. Cheers, Craig. Craig constantly sends me stuff, us stuff. It's you. Let's just be honest about that. Yeah, but I'm a, I'm not a selfish bloke. You're a sharing guy. Yeah. You'll share camembert with anybody. Actually, I haven't even seen this. Some blokes making beef wellington. Anyway, whatever. Um, Craig goes, I've got a sh- uh, good short story for you and I'll try and keep it short. Appreciate it. Oh, shit. Hang on. Prank caller. I was a sous chef at a spot with a wood-fired oven and a chef that loved to do whole hog butchery. Fuck yes. So one day we broke down a whole pig and I roasted the bones off in the wood-fired oven. Yum. Mm-hmm. I pulled one of the trays out and had to take it to a prep room in the back. While holding it, I pushed a swinging door open with my foot and leaned a little too far back and ended up filling my shirt breast pocket with pork fat. Ah, Ouch. Oh, my God. While my my nipple and shirt... I know these... I know those shirts, too. They're thin, hey, with the pockets. You know the ones with the... It's not a chef jacket. It's kind. It kind of is now. Not like a, not a traditional double sort of breasted one. Yeah. Sometimes they have the. It kind of looks like a college shirt with the. Yeah, yeah. Like on a one with the pin. Yeah. I think it's one of those. Ow, that would fucking go straight on your nipple. Yeah. While my nipple and shirt was sizzling, I managed to set the tray down and rip my shirt off. 
Um, at this moment in time, I was sleeping with the front of house manager standard, and she texted standard. <laughs> and she texted me later that night during service and said, "I bet that nipple tasted like pork, and I'm gonna find out." Jesus. Yeah, standard. And That's she a standard did. front of house manager. Like, if you ever think those ladies are getting fucked over, they are doing the fucking man. That's for sure. Jesus. She did, and it did. Um, she did what? She sucked on a man's burning nipple. She, uh, she f- I guess she found out that it tasted like pork. Wow. Eventually, a couple months later, I got my feeling back in my nipple. Wow. So that's a cool one. Yeah, those front of house managers are savage, hey? Yeah, I like it. You get I love like all your DMs. She gets to like Should I said Craig there? He didn't say the place he worked at. Sometimes I don't know. I want people to keep sending us shit, but I don't know if... No one's... There's a billion Craigs in the world. Yeah, no, but sometimes, like, if, if I read out, like, Norfolk Hotel or something, oh, yeah, like, yeah. this is not... But it's not Norfolk Hotel. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't want to get anyone in trouble. I want the DMs to keep coming. We're not trying to... We're not trying to fucking fuck your day up even worse than it is. Yeah. You got a burning nipple and then someone... Licks jumps. it for some odd reason, And then dude. someone makes a viral clip like, out of your situation. I'd say do anything else to my body tonight, babe, but, like, just stay away from my nipple. I don't think I've burnt my nipple ever. I don't think I've ever done it. I've never burnt my nipple. I think I would fucking remember. You would remember that story, hey? Yeah. I reckon I've burnt nearly every other part of my body except my nipple. Um... I got right on the tip of my dick a hot pan <laughs> because – no, no, so so the, this um, – Someone timestamp this one. I'm going to clip it. <laughs> yeah. So it was one of those things I were taking the pot uh, – okay. I'm trying to think. I was standing looking at dockets. I'm trying to visualise where I was. So I'm standing looking at dockets and below me the, the – actually the veg the, – the melting pots of mm. dirty pans – the, uh, she was trying to get out. This is uh, what his fucking name is. Anyway, she was trying to get out, trying to find a pan to reuse because we're so panned out, right? Just to scrape out or something. So she and she was just taking them out and you know, and she was just happening to hold a pan by here, like looking this way, like trying to get them all out, but just holding a hot pan. Uh. I think she had it on the heat. Or something. Oh, the way it was it's fucking hot, hot. <laughs> and it was just there. But I was just like, okay, I'll let her do it because she had to drag the tray out to do it. Yeah. She had to drag the what do you call them? The, the crates of hot pans out. So she's like, fucking, just give me a sec. And I was like, oh, I'll, I'll just stand I'll like, while I'm reading the dockets. So I'm not looking that she's holding this pan, but it was on me. It was on my apron, on my sh- on my pants, and then I just, I just felt this almighty just like just oh. on my dick. Like, it got all the way through. Oh. And I went, ah. And, and then I saw she had this pan, like, right on me. But she, but she was just, like, in deep, just holding the pan <laughs> behind her. And I was like, fuck's sake. And then she saw, obviously, she's just burning my... But it was so light on the... I didn't feel it on me. But, I mean, she's just there anyway. Like, you don't really think uh-huh. they might bash you or whatever. And then I was like, this almighty, fuck. And then it's like, yeah. It's also like it was more, it felt more like steamy than anything. Like it was oh. sweat and just, it just ignited. Did you tell her? Hey, you're burning my she dick d- right now. What? You didn't have to say it. <laughs> I was like, fuck. And she's like, oh, shit. Like, oh. Yeah. Because like she was holding it. Like, yeah. I can't believe she hasn't DM'd us. Like, hey, Lockie, do you remember that time when I burnt your dick? <laughs> she probably burnt other dicks, eh? Hey? She yeah. probably went, fuck, was this, she is a, this is a good trick. Was she full lesbo? No, no. She fucked the head chef. She fucked. Good way to climb the corporate ladder, uh, Dan, if you don't want to deal with piss cunts. This chick, no doubt, she, on her trial, didn't have a chef jacket. So she walked through the kitchen in a crop top, walked through and, and found our head and said, oh, I didn't have a chef jacket. You said you would provide them, which the, the, the place we're at did. So she was right, but she didn't have to walk through in her bra, essentially, right? And uh, he was, how old was she? Uh, I don't know, mid twenties. Super young. Good looking and a boob job. Yeah. Really. Yeah. So it's like played it well. Yeah. Got the job immediately mm-hmm. on merit alone, mm-hmm. and double merit. And yeah. Hey yo. Started to figure out how to do a pan section. <laughs> <laughs> immediately burnt yeah. someone's dick. Yeah. Chef, do we still need her? He's like, we really need her. Yeah. She's great. We found out heaps of shit later. Um. 
stuff that he, she did with the chef in the cool room. And then she eventually did the chef for like sexual harassment, all kinds oh. of shit. Yeah. But she was like. Sucked him off for uh, marijuana. For cause. marijuana? Or she had a boyfriend like, too. She had a boyfriend too. All right. But was he like, you need to suck me off to give you marijuana? Or? I wasn't there, but this is the story we heard and then it got confirmed. Yeah. She went over to his house. With, oh, she went over to his house. Her boyfriend drove, drove her over to get pot from him. <laughs> they ended up. This is how she got it and then left. So, like, this is stuff we used to talk about in the so kitchen. She's like, I didn't bring any money. And he's like, okay. Yeah. But she was already banging the dude. He so. was, I don't know, I don't know what was going on at that point. There was different, definitely, this guy as well, he had a girl's name. Probably shouldn't say it. So he, he got uh, dismissed because of this in the end. Um, but he also did a bunch of other shit just all the time. Like he went to, um, he got drunk. He always always get drunk at work and give you beers, even if you drunk him or not. He would just be like this guy, like during service. Like we were, we were serving like great shit too. It was fucked up. Like you couldn't. And he, and he was a good chef. No, no. But he had like he wrote on his resume that he worked at the Fat Duck and he never did and see shit like this. Yeah, Jesus. Perth Perth never checked. Well, at least they didn't at the time. Perth doesn't check. They don't check. So, um, but one day he, it's hilarious, but it's probably traumatising for the lady. So he, <laughs> he, we needed to go piss so hard because he'd obviously just, he was always drunk during night service. And so it was always like, you can go home. We got this. It's all good, chef. Yeah. Uh-huh. But it was like, fucking whatever, working with a toddler. He needed to go for a piss. We found this later, right? He went, he went for a piss. Uh, all the booths in the... The male toilet was full. There was someone in the staff toilet, so he went to the uh, thing. Maybe it was disabled or the women's toilet, and it, it was being cleaned at the time. And he was like, "Fuck it, I'm going in here. I need a piss, right?" So um, this lady was the maid. I don't want to say maid. What are they called now? Cleaner. Cleaner. It was a female cleaner was cleaning the toilet, and he was like, I need to piss. She's like, "I'm cleaning it." So he pissed in the sink. Started pissing in the sink. Mm-hmm. She goes, "Can't piss in there." And he said something about his dick, like, be you see my dick or something like this, right? This is the story. And um, she didn't want to see it. She's like, you can't just get your dick out. Like, I'm cleaning them. Yeah. And it wasn't a male toilet. I know it definitely wasn't a male toilet. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he was like, yeah, he was cool with that at the time. <laughs> yeah, look. And then he told everyone. This is what his problem was, too, is he couldn't keep it together. Yeah. So he would be like, guess what I just did? I just sexually pissed assaulted a cleaner. Yeah. Pissed in the sink. Yeah. Told someone to look at my I dick. Fucked this chick for drugs. Yeah. yeah. All this is shit, right? Um, so anyway, she dobbed him in straight away. Just went, the, yeah. the head chef, fucking whatever. Um, so, and then uh, this chick, the, the burning pan dick chick, she, uh, so at the same time, on the same day, that cleaner, cleaner's boyfriend found out that he showed her his dick and the chef's chick's boyfriend found out that they did whatever they did the mm. same day. So he found out via text message there was going to be two blokes coming around to bash him on Sunday wow. lunch service. There's a line of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wasn't I wasn't working either. I didn't I used to do Sunday for a bit, so this guy left. Um but it was just like Sunday lunch and then it was over, didn't do night service. Mm. Um, so he was like freaking out. <laughs> Apparently he was just like freaking out, doing no work. Well, he never did any work anyway. But he was freaking out. Oh, so he's going to bash me. So you need to just go home. You're not doing anything. Well, just get bashed and move on. Yeah. But no one bashed him. They turned, uh, what the cleaner chicks dude turned up at the hotel. Mm-hmm. And there was like, oh, you can't come in here. And he's like super angry. Yeah. I'm just looking for an explanation, bro. Why did your head chef get his dick out and tell my cleaner to look at it? Yeah. And he's pissing my the cleaner, sink. My wife. My cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> she probably cleaned that house too. At the home, of course. It's not an unreasonable... Um, Dude, there's so much debauchery in the hospitality system, hey? But he didn't get fired for... Okay, so that happened before this uh, drug hot pan chick. So he nothing ever happened to this guy before this. So we're like, how has this guy still got a job? And then, But how does he have a job if he doesn't have any skills? What the fuck is he, he doing? He could definitely cook. But he was too much of a like. But uh, was he ordering? Was he? Did he have everything ordered all nah, the time? Nah, because like nah, because the Sue would order, and I was junior, so I ended up being sous chef there. 
with my friend. And uh, once he left, and it all sort of got back to... So how the fuck do... Because I know a lot of those kind of guys. How did they get those positions besides lying their way in? Uh, I guess there's a sort of bloke that can talk their way out of bullshit, sexual assault. Yeah, Bullshit yeah. owners. Yeah. It, exactly what it was, is management going... Uh, well, the least I have to do is their number one skill, I think, management. Mm. Unless they're great and they can multitask everything and yeah. actually be communicating. and yeah. yeah. Most of the time, they're just... In my experience, just just putting band-aids up, going, you know, everything's going cool. And now, I can go, and now I can go back to doing what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. That's why I'm a good junior Sue, because I really always felt bad if I didn't have a big, uh, as big a workload as anyone else in the kitchen. Like, if my workload was less than someone else's, I always felt bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So as junior Sue, you, like, Sue chefs have a massive workload, but junior Sue's had like a big kitchen workload. Like, yeah. oh, I've got to cover yours, cover that, help with this, yeah. do mine. Yeah, and while your head chef's not on the pass. And he used to try and be on the pass on the other side, which is always nice, oh, right? Yeah. No, no, it was always nice. If you had someone on the other side of the pass, fucking every time I'd take that. Okay, yep. Put it up, wipe the plates and tell them where to go. Fucking mm -hmm. do it. But he would just disappear. So that's the other thing is like, I don't mind if someone does that, but you got to do your job still. You can't just now. I'm doing it yeah, sometimes, got, and yeah, I'm exactly. You got to know if I'm doing it every time. I got to know. Um, so that was just he just disappear on you. He'd disappear during service, so he'd be plating up on one side, he'd just disappear, and then come back. Do you want some? Do you want some? Uh, um, do you want some Jamison or something? And you're like, uh, if we just get through these ten dockets, <laughs> we're cool, bro. If we just get through the entrees, let's get through the entrees while you help, because yeah, it's yeah. always nice having someone to help you. So it's not like we could send him anywhere. Or rely on him to do anything. Fuck, he went ape shit one day. He like put he put a bit. I, I don't know how we were gonna go because he put a pint of beer on this shelf above me, and I was plating up, and he was just hovering around being drunk. So I was just plating up. By the way, we were the, one of the best restaurants rated in Perth. So it's like at the time. So I was like, how is this? And also, we have to do it perfectly. It's not like we were just. I know pub it. foods are fine, but like it's just the difference. Yeah, yeah. It's like not we're just slapping. going chips, parmy, salad. We're not doing that. Mm. We're trying to get the fucking puree hot. And I got a few squeeze. I've got a sides coming from someone else. I've got yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's all coming over. We got different sections. Um, and sending desserts in the means all this sort of shit. That was his job. Now I'm doing the cooking, make sure the slut fucking puts her shit up and she's got it in the pan. Yeah, my shaft is burning. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, he had it up there, but he put it there and it he put it so it was just on the edge, not deliberately because he's drunk. He just put it there. Your beer's up there. And I was like, oh, yeah, just leave it there. No worries. Yeah, you can, yeah, yeah. Just fucking shut up while I fucking played up, right? And it fully poured all the way over my head immediately and all down the back. And I just... All I could think of was just swing, dude. Just like get him out of here. Uh. I was like swing and drag him out the back, just to get rid of him. Lock the door. That's what the initial thought was: lock, drag him out the back, however you can, and lock the door. I don't want to. I had enough. <laughs> but just the feeling of that beer going. Did you just pour that on my head, or did it fall on my head, or what? Do you think that's? And he just laughed. You're like, <laughs> well, I guess I get to get you another one, sort of shit. You're like, you get don't, out. you don't. You just have to put the puree we give you on the plate. Yeah. And when I give you a perfect fucking cooked piece of meat, you put it on the plate. Even like he would. The idea is you carve it, you put it. So I'm even doing everything for the guy. Even when he was on the pass, I'm going. That's for sixteen. That's for Ugh, horrible, dude. Bullshit. Horrible. And also, we horrible, come from an horrible. industry where it's okay. Like it would be f perfectly fine to just like. Drag that guy out, you mm. know. Get yeah, aggressive. but it's just at that point you'd had enough. It's also that you've like you've cooked most of that stuff on order, so there's no there's no coming back. There's no pausing. There's yeah. no because I'm cooking. And One of my classic chef he's friends. He's throwing beer at me. And I'm still doing it. Do something. Yeah. Just do something. Do something. Yeah. <laughs> do anything. And he get aggressive. He used to go to the gym on his break. And, and show you his muscles and stuff. I'm like, this guy sounds like a fucking idiot. He's the worst guy I ever worked with. Yeah. Hands down. Like, even, like, Pete was on the other day. I used to think he was, and then I met this guy. Pete sounds like the best chef I've ever met in my life. Pete can cook, though. Yeah. Because at least, at least, he Pete's doesn't... He's a very passionate cook. Yeah, but he's a nightmare. He's a nightmare yeah. to work with. Probably. Well, he used to be. I don't know what he's like now. 
Probably awesome. We've yeah. all we've all mellowed. No way. There's no way. I don't think Pete have, ever will. <laughs> but I think it's like the level we're both at is like we're both mellow, but we can both take it or leave it. Yeah, yeah. So if he started anything, you're like, that's cool, <laughs> and just never see him again. You know. <laughs> no, Pete's going to be a regular. He was hilarious. He was so funny. He sent me a few things afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Once you respond, he's your mate. Off you go. <laughs> he's you can have all of it. <laughs> he's sending you a few things. <laughs> he's, he was like a, like a West Australian celebrity on on YouTube channels. He did stuff. Uh, starting to play and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Very funny. <laughs> yeah. Mm, where, that head chef sound terrible. My mate that used to say... He was know, on like 150k a year, so... That's fucking bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the thing that <laughs> aggravates me the most is doing someone else's this, job. Eh? Doing someone else's job and you're getting paid so much money. I wouldn't even thought about it if you just stayed out of the way even. Yeah, just either fuck off. Because I was on nice money there as a, a junior and then the Sue was fine. I mean, it all, it's all relative, right? Like, But yeah. at that place, you're like, fucking, you can pay me this to put up with this guy. But he, and then you eventually start going, shit, he's on a what? Yeah, but to what's pour the beer point? on me what, while yeah, what I is serve the point up his shit food. What is the point of those head shit? How? That's what I'm saying. Like, where did they get off? You couldn't convince the management. We were all saying it. That's the, and then eventually, the chick that was like what we thought was causing the problems as well by sleeping with him and all sorts of shit was the one that got him booted. We're like, of course, yeah, of that's course, the chick who got the free the drugs and. All Everything else, fucking, ar- fucking around the end of the night. She whoa, sounds whoa. a little bit devilish as well, that woman, to be honest. Totally. Because who's going to bang a sloppy head chef who's drinking all the time? I think she ended up marrying that dude too, eh? The other guy. Yeah. That she cheated on. Is that a cuck? Yep. So I got called a cuck today. Cool. Let's finish on that. All right, so... <laughs> I never look at Facebook Messenger because Facebook Messenger is shit. Well, on my on my pet dude food, uh, it's just automatically gets shared to Facebook from Insta. Yep, and whatever. So that's which is important to note. So this guy sent me a message today that said, um, "How much money? You, know, you must you must get paid a lot by insert company to promote their products to, to promote their food, um, even though they're." abusive crackheads that just happen to serve great food, right? Right. That's what it said. There is a business in there, but I'm going to say it. Um, that's the first I saw this guy communicate with me. And I even didn't know you could switch between accounts on messages. So when I opened the messages, I was like, whatever. So I opened it and he just happened to have like a couple of months worth of just random just things he'd sent to me. Okay. Not abusive, but they were just like, that's nice one. And I couldn't see what he was referencing, but like yeah. I could see, oh shit, this guy's been sending me this. You know, For he must have like a yeah. So basically, my biggest fan, right? <laughs> not even, not even like, yeah, not even people that like me see all my shit. This guy's seen everything. Anyway, so I said, well, they've never abused. Me. So my reply to that was, um, they've never abused me. I've never been paid by them. And he just wrote that me. Um, he just wrote uh then you're a cuck. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and then he immediately blocked me so I couldn't reply. Yes. Yeah. So just, just the ultimate cuck move, which but by the way, he got me it, like, he knows I haven't seen these messages, but now he's seen them. I've gone like, well, well I've just answered you. Like yeah. you've, a- you've asked me a question, how much do you get paid? And like, for, and they're abusive. And I was like, well, they've never abused me. And, um, and he also said that I had great food. So <laughs> like, what the fuck? What a legend. And then, but like, he has a problem with me. Does he have a problem with me being paid by them? So they did pay me. Is this his problem? No, because so, that's an alpha male move. Yeah, but like he's suggesting that... Doing content for them without getting paid is a cuck move. But there's two different things he's saying. Mm-hmm. So if I don't get paid, you're a cuck. Yeah. Because I said I'm going to get paid for this shit. Yeah. But is he saying how much you get paid, you know, like... If you don't get paid and you're promoting these people, it's a cuck move. Yes, that's what I think he's saying. But it came across the first comment and the other comments above yeah. was like, you must be getting paid for this shit. Or also, he's probably just like fishing. He's yeah. putting out a comment. Well, that's and what as it was. soon as you reply, he's going to call you a cuck and block you. And then panic. <laughs> Please don't reply before I block no, you. No, just like a, maybe it's like an alpha male move where he's calling people cucks and then blocking them. 
But that's not alpha male at yeah, all. It's not. But also, if, what's yeah, less than beta? Than just trying to message a guy that hasn't messaged you in three months. And can keep that's what messaging. I mean. If you just want, if you want to be my boyfriend, just say so. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's probably where that was going to. Just say the words. You know, you never know. Hilarious. But, yeah. Do you feel like you're a cuck? I to Google it. Yeah, and, what and that's why I was what asking: is, is that a cuck? What's the definition? Is that that you're being used, or you, you like being used, or you, um, y- yeah, you enjoy being used, and you bring it on yourself. Yeah, like you like, um, especially in a male female relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or like you're being intimidated to do things that you don't want to do, or uh, it was pretty vague. I don't think it's to do what you don't want to do. It's like, yeah, it's either you enjoy like being like manipulated or used or something like that used yeah or yeah under other people's power yeah that was sort of the vibe of the um i don't know exact definition but i yeah. looked it up and i was like oh okay so you're either a top so i don't know g, what you're talking about you're a top g andrew tate yeah or you're a cut do you know how um do you know how alpha it is to make viral content for free from a bought fucking sandwich do you know how fucking insane that is? Yeah. yeah. Alpha male move? Yeah. Yeah. And then never say it. Mm. Never even put the price on it. But you've bought it. You know in your head that at any time, come see the receipt. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I can afford lunch. He's in your Don't head. get upset you can't afford lunch and then start calling people uh, cucks. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. I wonder if there's cucks in kitchens. Can can cucks is as, as new a word as umami. Yeah. But like, I also think like, if you want to role play, you want to role play how insane it would be to walk up to a venue and, or walk up to just the counter, not even like the owner, and say, hey, like, do you know who I am? Sort of shit. Mm. Can I have a free fuck? Can I have a $12 sandwich? Mm. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's good. Like, you have to, number one, you have to get there, the transport. Yeah. So you have to really want this free shit. <laughs> you have to get there, park there, pay for parking probably in the city. Park, let's say it's in, right. Now you've paid more this than place a sandwich. Is. Fuel. Yep. Um, everything. Time. Yeah. And then you're not even guaranteed it's going to be good or, or and especially online, it's emphasis on looking good mm-hmm. or at least explaining that something that looks shit is good. Mm-hmm. Are you still going to keep doing it? When he blocked you, and we're going to go right now, but when he blocked you, your first feeling, honestly, was it cuck or alpha? How did you feel? That guy? You. Did he make you feel like a cuck or alpha? Oh, I just laughed at him and, ha, of course you don't want to reply. <laughs> yeah. You don't, want so you, you don't want what I've got. You've, you took he, the alpha position. He would have seen everything I've ever replied to. <laughs> I don't alpha. go, you fucking piece of shit. I go, explain this. Yeah. Or... Yeah. Tell me about the last time you could afford Subway. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think chefs are pretty alpha anyway. We'll like, we enjoy conflict, so. What it's just day to, it's, it's day to day, all day, every day. Mm. Yeah. I think that's the, it's the, it's the way people, it's the way, if, you, if your experienced chef holds themselves too, it's like, I'd, yeah. yeah. You, it's like, I think for any normal person, if you saw me in that, if someone, if he was, if this guy was standing right in front of me, it would be exact same scenario. It would be like asking pe- the hardest questions without being abusive either. Yeah. It would just be like, what do you mean? And then have you explain it and then them get frustrated and abusive. You're mm. like, well, yeah, but you I think you came up to me. I didn't, yeah. Cool. But it's that, it's that, I think it's that calm, you don't know what I've seen, bullshit behind the eyes. You know, like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. When it's never going to get violent, it's no, just no. going to be. It's going to get serious, though. But I think in a normal person's head. I'll break it down psychologically. But in a normal person's head, it's like, is this going to get. How is this going to go now? Holy shit. I didn't expect. I've never had that response before. Mm. Well. I've never been invited to sit down with a guy that I've abused. Yeah. Congratulations to that guy. You got a response out of Lockie. So. Yeah. Good, good for you. I like that. Someone got me. <laughs> you asked a question then blocked me. Yeah. Dude, we manufactured a good podcast. That's good news. All right. That was wicked. It's good fun. Cool. Done? Uh, I'm done if you're done. It's time to get the kids. Thanks, man.